Journalist Heath Hausman has covered Governor Susana Martinez since she was the district attorney in Doña Ana County. We sat down recently here at New Mexico PBS to t with Heath to talk about her legacy after two terms in office. I'm Gene Grant here with Heath Hausman of NMPolitics.net. Heath is working with us this year on our legislative and interim committee coverage. Heath, welcome back. Thanks for having Let's me. Let's talk about some politics. Yeah. Um, you've covered Governor Martinez, of course, since she was DA uh, in your part of the world. I'm so curious how you've seen her evolution in the, these two terms in the governor's office. She hasn't been, I think, what a, lo what a lot of people from southern New Mexico who knew her well expected. Mm -hmm. um, in, in a county that at this point has almost no elected Republicans, uh, Susana Martinez was a Republican as district attorney people liked. Um, and I think they expected to see that up mm -hmm. here. And instead, um, I often hear Democrats from Las Cruces in that area say she acts kind of like Steve Pierce, yeah. um, rather than like a moderate Republican they can get on board with. Um, I don't know that that's an entirely fair criticism, uh, but but I do think she has governed like a prosecutor, mm -hmm. and yeah. I, I, don't, I don't really know why people expected her to do differently. That was her experience. That's how she sees the world. I watched her prosecute child abuse deaths and kind of and covered those and, and watched her her mindset sh her mindset shift about. I mean, our prosecutors get into the darkest corners of the world, That's and right. and they have to live in that. That's right. And it affects their worldview. She's yeah. a very black and white person, yeah. good and evil. Um, and that's why even in her State of the State address last week, she started off with a joke that was not really a joke. It was a jab at the legislature for suing her right. over vetoes, right? She, she takes shots with a smile on her face and speaks very calmly, but she's being mean. Yeah. Uh, and they hear it that way, and they should. She intends it that way. It's picking a fight, and mm -hmm. she picks a lot of fights. Legacy is a tough issue. Of course, her reign is not over, but I'm curious how... You know, the idea of how Santa Fe might see her and her legacy must be different from how Doniana County might see her and her legacy. You touched on this just a little bit, but is it too early to talk about her legacy? No, for her? I don't think so. Yeah. Um, especially that we're in a 30-day budget session. This is probably her last session. Right. Um, and, and she's probably not going to get most of the crime bill she's looking for this year, which she's pushed for as part of her legacy. Mm -hmm. um, so what's, what's left that's going to happen this year? We're going to fund government a little better than we have the last few years or a little more. I should say. Um, I, I wrote a column actually talking about one of her biggest legacies are, are the negatives, the times that people were hurt and the behavioral health, the freezing of uh, Medicaid funds to behavioral health agencies I think was one of those that we saw a huge impact in southern New Mexico and really that was, that was the moment where I watched people in Las Cruces who knew her personally really change their attitudes about her. That we expected her to be, people who'd seen her prosecuting men who had killed college students or children, um, and they saw that human side of her. Things we saw in the State of the State Address, when she's talking about crime victims, she cries. Right. We, and it's genuine. Sure. We, we saw that always in Las Cruces. Um, and then you freeze Medicaid funds to behavioral health agencies, and more people get criminalized mm -hmm. uh, because they can't get the help they need. Mm -hmm. And they end up in a situation with cops who have guns, and the outcome is almost predetermined at that point. Mm -hmm. and, and, I really saw attitudes in southern New Mexico about her shift when that happened. She's certainly been active in state politics as well. We have, a, we have an upcoming election year. Mm -hmm. How much influence do you think you might, she might have in her operation, so to speak, on, on seats coming up? I, I don't know how much it's her operation anymore. I mean, yeah. and I know Jay McCleskey is working for uh, the former Hobbs mayor, Monty Newman, in the congressional race down there. Mm -hmm. um, does that mean she supports him? I don't know. Um, I, I, I have really felt like she has disconnected from the political scene in recent years. I, and this, this did not surprise me as governor that she was not any more afraid to take on Republicans as Democrats. Mm -hmm. She has always been uh, very solid in her belief in herself and not afraid to criticize anybody. Right. She had a very combative relationship with the Doniana County Republican Party when she was DA. Um, she just, I, I don't know that she has a lot of friends even in her own party. There's this kind of split between her and Steve Pierce. Then you have Aubrey Dunn, the state land commissioner, who feels like he's on the outs with both of them. And uh, a minor, for a minority party in, in a state to be so fractured is, 
that's part of her legacy, I sure. think, as the leader of her party the last seven years, that that's kind of stunning that they're so fractured. Mm -hmm. Just uh, my last question, there's been some activity, of course, from uh, certain political people in the southern part of the state, Steve Pierce running for governor. Mm -hmm. You've got a couple of new faces, or one new face at least, running for his old seat, mm -hmm. or soon to be old seat down right. there. How do you see, just in your overall take on politics in, in that district, what, what's, what's the sense of it now? My sense is uh, Democrats have not done the work they would need to do to really win that seat and hold it. Yeah. Um, it needs organizing outside of Las Cruces. Um, so it's likely a Republican will be, uh, will win that race this year. Mm -hmm. um, there could be a big enough wave that a Democrat wins it this year, but I don't expect them to hold it even if that happens. Right. Uh, there's just more long-term structural work that would need to be done for Democrats in that district. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Heath. Really appreciate your Thank time you. with all of these. Do you care about good government? Have a lead or a tip you want to share with journalists you trust? New Mexico PBS and our media partners KUNM and NMPolitics.net set up a hotline for New Mexicans to share tips and concerns about state government. It's 505-336-0520.